Welcome to Power Search. Scan to BIM technology is the process of capturing a site with a 3D laser scanner and later using that data to create a BIM model. I will demonstrate how to quickly convert your point cloud scan into Revit elements. Starting with a default Revit template, insert a point cloud. In this demonstration, I'll be using Cloudworks which works with both RCP and LGS point cloud exports. I'll start with the RCP format, ensuring that this is connected to the app. Most of the work will be done in the 3D view, where I can use the view cube to orient the model. With the model in elevation, from the clipping panel on the ribbon, I select View X. This tool will enable me to slice through the point cloud to create a sectional view. When using Cloudworks, pay attention to the instructions in the lower left hand corner. As noted earlier, I am using a default Revit template which currently contains only one level. Using the point tool, I can select any points of interest on the point cloud model and from those points create project levels and associated plans from which to host Revit elements. Here I use the point tool to quickly create a level and a ceiling plan as shown here on the browser. Then using the same view I repeat this process to create a ceiling level from which I can constrain future elements. Adjusting the view scale can help to view the levels when they are so close together as they are in this case. Back in the isometric view, I can use the clipping manager to toggle the model visibility depending on what information I need at any given moment. It is always a good idea to rename these clippings for future reference. Notice the clipping manager also recognizes the Revit scope box which has been applied. I can now deactivate the slice to revert back to the full model view. With the manager still open, I can create another slice using one of the line tools to create an instant floor plan. The new slice is listed here. Using this view in conjunction with the wall fit tool, it is possible to create walls directly from the point cloud. Let me show you how. Using the wall fitter, nominate where on the point cloud you would like to place a wall. Then select a wall type already existing in the project or check this option to create a new type. Here I nominate the type thickness and the type name. Then click OK and the wall is instantly placed with the right constraints. I can now proceed and quickly create some more walls. I recommend using the view cube to give you the best view when using the fitters. This will provide the best results. The great thing is the app has remembered all of my previous selections so I can race through to the wall selection and now switch over to a plan view on the browser to trim the walls together. And just like that, three Revit walls have been modelled and accurately aligned to the point cloud. I hope you are enjoying the demonstration so far. If so, please hit that like button. Now, Revit models often require more than just walls. This point cloud also has an opening over here. I can use the box fence tool to highlight the area of interest.
and then using the door fitter, I can select the required door type from the available dialog and click OK to proceed. Following the instructions provided, in the lower left corner I can select the hosting wall and now draw a boundary over the point cloud where the door is located. I can select the required door or create a new one. And then click OK to place the door. To close out this section, I can use the Clipping Manager to reset the visibility. And just like that, I have quickly added levels, walls and a door using the point cloud as a hosting reference. Most of the time, point clouds reflect real world imperfections where no blemishes are hidden. Let's for example take a closer look at this junction, where the surface changes direction various times within a confined space. Reconstructing this with Revit elements would take some time and be quite tedious. In this demonstration, I used a line tool in Cloudworks to create a 2D polyline over the point cloud. I am simply tracing the perimeter of the point cloud. This places a green 2D polyline over the model, which as I zoom in closer should be easier to see. Sketching the polyline is fairly easy. I can start and stop at any time. There is also a very useful undo button. The term curve is a general term for all sorts of curved and straight shapes in the Revit API. End curve ends the command and takes me to the polyline to wall command, where I am required to select a starting level, a top constraint and also select the wall type to be used. And by clicking OK, the 2D polyline is turned into a 3D wall element that follows the surfaces of the point cloud. Cloudworks is also compatible with the LGS format, and this offers some additional functionality. Using the True Space tool will enable you to view the point cloud from the various setup stations that we used on site to create the point cloud. This is true scan to beam technology. Using the red dot, find the setup that you would like to work with to locate an area of interest. In this demonstration, I am using the app to locate some beams. And then with pick on point cloud selected, I can use the beam fitter to quickly place beams in the Revit model, instantly located in the right place and at the right pitch. That's quite amazing. It would otherwise take much longer to locate and model this beam using conventional methods. If you think that's amazing, give this video a like. Following on because of the pre-work that I did earlier in the demonstration, I can quickly create floor plan views associated to the level of this beam. This enables me to clearly view the point cloud beams and quickly work up the remaining beams in the model to complete the 3D reconstruction. It is important to note that Cloudworks is the starting point only. You will still need to use wise workflows to improve modeling efficiencies. This means using Revit's native tools well. And like any Revit project, taking the time to set up beforehand is imperative. In this sectional view, I have predetermined levels and a scope box associated, which enables me to cleanly cut the beams where required.
For example, with one beam already placed and cut, I can use the array command to quickly replicate them in the model. Following these principles will mean that you can generate an accurate as-built model in a reduced amount of time. That's the end of the video. I hope that you learnt something new and that you found it interesting. If you did, consider subscribing and hit the like button and drop a comment. And I'll see you in the next video.